Want to find out how I produced this figure on the concept artwork of Alex Ross? Stick around and I'll show you how I did it. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the basic items that you're going to need to produce this figure. You're going to need a Liu Kang body from Mortal Kombat, the torso and arms. Two Joker's Batman, you need the bottom half of that torso. And you will need a custom sculpt, which you can find on eBay and paint yourself. A poxy sculpt and, of course, some paint of your choice. Si deseas producir esta figura, necesitas la mitad de Liu Kang de Mortal Kombat. El Batman de Three Jokers y necesitas un rostro custom que puedes pintar tú mismo y un poco de masa o epoxy y pintura que es a tu gusto. Comencemos. This video will focus on painting the scars, not the outfit or the sculpt. So it is a short video this time and you can expand upon the artwork yourself to what you want to see rendered. Let's get started. So this is the top torso of the body from Liu Kang Mortal Kombat. Because it is a skin tone to start with, it provides a great base to create the scars needed for this particular figure. Now the face that you see there, or the sculpt, is a Superman sculpt. I just cut off the spit curl at the top and I went ahead and painted it in. Now. This is nothing more than a body swap at the top and you can see the other half of it in the background spinning around showing that it's the costume that he has taken off. But let me show you how I created those scars. So if you saw the Red Hood video on how to create the bullet holes, it's the same concept, except here I am using the X-Acto knife to heat up and I will be creating the scars along the chest and the back. Because it cools off so quickly, I only have opportunity to create one scar at a time. Now for video purposes, I have already created several scars, but this is how I did it. Once I choose the area where I want the scar, I run the knife along that. Now the set that's on here, you can clean that off with some alcohol or some thinner because there's no paint on here yet. It's the straight plastic. Now the bandages that you see there are textured and that is nothing more than epoxy. And you see the other epoxy on the forearms that I then have to sand down once it dries. Now once you've created everything you want here, just let it set there, let the epoxy dry until it's ready to be sanded and painted. So the epoxy is now dry. You can ignore the one that's on the head. I ended up removing it, I didn't like it. But the arms are dry, now I can sand those down, and the back. As you can see, it produced some melted plastic on the edges, and that's not what I want to see in my finished product. So I will sand that down, because I want it to look flush. I want it to look uh, believable. I don't want it to look like I actually melted it. Now the bandages have texture. I want the texture. I'm not going to be sanding those down. I have already applied with the airbrush a base skin tone to match the face and now I am applying those spots that we all have in our skin using the bristles on the brush and just flicking spots onto the actual body and then I'm covering it again with another base coat of flesh tone and now I'm at the last step and I'm applying the color or tone of the skin that I want to have on the actual torso. I want to match the face. So this time I did not separate the abs from the top of the torso because I'm really not going to be placing this in exaggerated poses and so I'm not going to be looking underneath where the abs are. So I am only exposing what I'm going to paint. And I'm not going to paint the sockets because I don't want to have an excess of thick paint that it's going to be uh, rubbing off. Only the areas that are exposed. Now once you've got it painted with a orange wash, then what you want to do is come back with your towel or your sponge or your paper towel and dab off the excess. Don't wipe it away. Just dab it just touch it 
And I like the terry cloth because it leaves spots. It produces uh, a texture and leaves areas that are still in color and it looks more believable than using a sponge. So take your time working with the torso and the arms, not only because you want them to match, but because this is going to be what's drawing attention to the figure. And don't worry about the bandages, we'll get to those later. What you want to do is get the tone and the details that you want because that's where the attention is going to be. So it's difficult to see the texture and the speckling on camera here. But in person, you can actually see that there's some red, some blue, a little bit of yellow. So there's a little bit of speckling in there to make it look more believable. Now the bandages are painted in the flesh tone, but I'm going to paint those back in in just a moment. However, I'm going to show you how I did that using the arms because I haven't worked on those yet. Now this is pretty much as far as I go as far as battle damage. I don't do things that are bloody and gruesome. I want it to look something more that's actually uh, believable but still appealing. Now going to the arms, because I have not finished those yet, I did put in the bruising and I did that with blues and pinks. And that's going to depend on your taste. If you want to go into gruesome then you can go into some darker colors. I went with lighter tones and I went uh, with a little bit of blue and then just used washes of blue over and over until I got the desired effect that I wanted. Now you can use your hair dryer to speed up the process and that's gonna help you. Then you can come back in and use the flesh tone, mix it in with red and put in the second layer of the bruised area and you're gonna have to work it not only into the crevice that you created but the flesh tone around it and then again use a little bit of water to create a wash and spread that paint around to blend it into those blues so that it looks like it's a flesh that is still tender and is going to be aggravated if you touch it so it's going to look a bit more believable depending on how big the flesh wound is it's going to be depending how much of the colors you're going to use and to finish it off you'll take some straight red a fine tip brush and put it right into the crevice you created now if you want to go gruesome then you want to go with more liquid or more water and let it drip on the edges i don't do gruesome this is as far as i go but this is what i did to the torso itself wherever you have any of the scars that's how you're going to treat them so getting back to the bandages, because they are painted in a flush tone, it's difficult to see them. However, they are textured, so it makes it very easy to apply paint and make them stand out. So I did not want them to be stark white. I did apply white or mix it into my flush tone to make it look more like a bandage and that still didn't suffice. So I went ahead and added even more white to make it look like a translucent white that's been applied onto the skin tone so that you can actually see underneath it. That looks so much better. Now once I had that done, I did apply my blues and my pinks to the edges to make it look like it's uh, infected or it's been uh, uh, very tender skin. And then I went ahead and applied a pink or a salmon color to the bandage itself to make it look like it's a dirty bandage and it looks much more believable and as you can see I'm using a fine tip brush and I believe this is a quadruple zero so it's very very tiny to get in there now you don't want to over paint the bandage it's tiny once you've got the uh, concept of it being dirty then you can apply some straight red to the center to show where the actual uh, injury has taken place and that's kind of what I did to the rest of the bandages on the torso. You can go as far as you want with the paint on this. Now here you can see that I went back in and I did add my blues and my pinks to make it look like it's actually an injured part of the body.
let's take one last look at the parts list. We need a torso from Liu Kang, we need the bottom half of three Jokers Batman, and we need a custom sculpt that we need to paint and that we can find on eBay, and an epoxy sculpt for the bandages, and of course, your choice of paint to make it look the part. Hagamos un vistazo última vez a la lista de productos necesarios, un torso de Liu Kang, una, una porción del torso de Batman de Three Jokers, el rostro que es custom que puedes encontrar en eBay y pintarlo, y masa para hacer las diferentes cicatrices y, claro, pintura a tu gusto. I hope that you were able to pick up something on this short video. I'll leave you now with an ending clip of the product. Please comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you next time.